we've done. Before. Can we talk a little bit more about what we might be seeing going forward with the public health issues? The new designs are really no safer than the old designs. They're just new. Uh, they have a few less pumps, a little bit less plumbing, but they haven't solved the basic problem of that, that we saw led to the meltdown at, um, at Fukushima or uh, Chernobyl um, or Three Mile Island. They haven't altered nuclear physics to the point where these reactor designs are any safer than the old ones. And in fact, they introduced some fundamental problems which are not present in the earlier reactor since they rely on things which I believe they should not rely on. For example, I guess gravity is more reliable than an electric pump in order to supply water to a reactor which is in a failure mode. However, if you put that water above a reactor, now you're talking about 3,000 tons of water above a reactor, which itself weighs only about 400 tons. So you're talking about a huge weight on the top of this power plant so that when they open a valve, that the water will flow downwards according to gravity. However, you're building these reactors in earthquake-prone areas, South Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina, and elsewhere. And um, to put that kind of weight creates the inherent instability. And RC's experts have also identified problems with the containment structures of the Westinghouse AP-1000. Their major considerations also have to do with the with the environmental issues. The, the generic environmental impact statement, which serves uh, for license renewals, um, has to be supplemented. But what we're seeing is that there are low, from low dose exposures, that there are disproportionately affected individuals, and a higher level of morbidity and mortality, that is death and disease, in the areas around the Sequoia reactor, for example. So we've looked at public health statistics there and are continuing to do those studies. You've got flooding issues at Sequoia as a result of the failure of upstream dams. They've got uh, problems of uh, the long-term storage of irradiated nuclear fuel. The waste confidence decision, I think, should stop this re license renewal in its tracks. Um, we're talking about the uh, possibility of plutonium fuel use. This is a whole other issue, but Sequoia Nuclear is and TVA um, are included in the United States Department of Energy's surplus plutonium disposition statement, uh, which is still to be uh, ultimately decided. So they list Sequoia as one of the reactors that could use this weapons-grade plutonium downblended with uranium into a so-called mixed oxide fuel. So that's an outstanding question. Plutonium fuel introduces new risks in what we've already described as one of the most problematic reactor designs. Plutonium fuel would cause greater embrittlement. It would, if it was, if there was an accident or a meltdown, there would be greater uh, amount of radiation, more dangerous types of radiation. For example, the actinides, uh, which would include and add to the uh, public health impact from the escaping radioactive poisons. Um, and I already mentioned about the aging management plans, the critical components of the ice condenser containment. Uh, the severe ability to withstand severe accidents and the mismanagement of TVA's whistleblower complaints, long-standing, going back decades, I think you know all augur for uh, a denial of the of an extended license for Sequoia, and some of these considerations are uh, replicated. Uh, for example, the ice condenser containment issues at um, at the Catawba station in South Carolina, at the McGuire station in North Carolina, as well as Watts Bar. We look at the TVA culture and three of the six worst nuclear reactors in the country as far as whistleblower complaints are Tennessee Valley Authority reactors. Um, number one on the list is San Onofre which shut down already. Uh, when you take that off it's uh, there, there are three out of the top five nuclear plants in the country are Tennessee Valley Authority as far as whistleblower complaints. So we have a corporate culture problem at TVA at the worker bee level, and we've got a an out of control spending like a drunken sailor board at TVA that's uh, encouraging more nuclear plants in a culture that in fact is corrupted. Agreed, agreed. This is a very bad situation, and um, uh, I just wish that you know TVA would listen to the its better angels and go back doing what it did well from the beginning, which is 
uh, flood control and um, alternative renewable energy. They are doing some of that, um, and I think they should do more of it. Of course, that goes for the industrial and utilities as well, but TVA could be the draft horse for the green energy revolution if they would just wake up and smell the coffee. And on that note, we're going to wrap things up. So, Lou, thank you very much for joining us today. Arnie, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Matt. All right, thank you both. I enjoyed it. This podcast has been a production of Fairwinds Energy Education. 